Everybody is wondering what and where they all came from. Everybody is worrying about where they're going to go when the whole thing's done. But no one knows for certain, so it's all the same to me. I think I'll just let the mystery be. Sing along. Everybody is wondering what and where they all came from. Where they come from? Everybody is worrying about where they're going to go when the whole thing's done. I think I'll just let the mystery be. I think I'll just let the mystery be. I think I'll just let the mystery be. Oh, there we are. Hello. Good morning, beloveds. I already said my good mornings, but I wanted to say it again. Good morning. Happy February. Wow. It's February 5th already. Time is flying, and we're having a blast, aren't we? Yeah. Wonderful. It's so good to be here this morning with you, and I'm really, really I'm really thrilled about the topic and the seat of awakening for the month of February. The Seed of Awakening is Curiosity as a Superpower. Ooh. And uh, so we're going to take a dive in and really go deeper and appreciate the unknown. And what a perfect song you guys just played. Um, and being comfortable in it and, and remembering that without the unknown, life would be dull. What if we just knew everything and we knew what was going to happen from mo moment to moment and, right, not very fun at all. I see some people shaking heads over here, but yeah, <laughs> they're like, no, no, thank you. It would be dull, wouldn't it? And so we can get comfortable with the unknown, and sometimes um, there are some not-so-great things to experience in, in our uh, unconscious, right? Because some of that is unknown. A lot of that is unknown. Uh, so we're going to explore all of this for this month. And there's one quote that spoke to me so profoundly that I really felt like this quote could be the sermon, and then I'd be done. <laughs> And so it is, you know. So listen to this one. Uh, it's a quote by Rumi. He says, we've been walking in the surf, holding our robes up when we should be naked and diving under, deeper under. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So curiosity. Curiosity is one of life's most basic calls, and it is actually a superpower, and it is a superpower that we can use. It's such a powerful tool for personal and professional growth, and to be curious means to have a strong desire to learn and understand more about something. It is characterized by a willingness to explore new ideas, new perspectives, new um, experiences, and to seek new information and knowledge. So when people are curious, they are open-minded, eager to discover new things, and unsatisfied with the status quo. Therefore, they often ask questions and take an interest in a wide variety of subjects. Now, how many of you tend to be uh, more on the curious side, like you've always asked a lot of questions? Chall Let me see those hands again. Challenge the status quo. Yeah, oh, you're my people, right? All of us. I think everyone raised their hands. Um, and so, wonderful. So this is going to be easy for you. So easy, yes? So I got a little more curious um, in the past couple of weeks about what actually causes these unconscious triggers and upsets in me. Whoa, right? How intense is that? So does anybody get triggered ever? <laughs> anybody get upset ever, right? So I was curious, like, I feel like I'm pretty conscious, you know, I'm, I'm a minister, I've done a lot of training, and, but there are still things, so it's like, 
what are those things? And it occurred to me that in the science of mind, we really, we really uh, talk about and dive deeply into being conscious, you know, um, our conscious awareness. We're all about awakening, right, to the loving heart, the inspired mind, and the sacred soul present in every life. All right, so we know how to do that. We've got our prayer. We've got our meditation. You're cruising around, but I know every one of you have experienced this where all of a sudden that prayer didn't work, and here you are facing this thing that you don't like, and why is it here again, right? And you feel um, dismayed. You feel discouraged, and uh, you feel like it's taking over your life. Anyone? Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Something that just keeps coming back, like gum on your shoe, you know? <laughs> so I got curious about that. What are these things? And, and I want to, you know, take a look at them and address them. So these are like hidden beliefs, things that are in our unconscious and we're not aware of them because we're conscious beings. So what's in the unconscious, which is that creative medium, the soil that is creating our lives for us, that's what's, um, that's what's leading our lives, right? So we say there's only one life, that life is God, that life is perfect, that life is my life now. And then we get mad at someone who cuts us off on the freeway or, you know, what, and that's a, by the way, that's an automatic reaction from your unconscious, you know. And so what are these things, right? And, and it's going to take courage for me to dive in because that's like diving into the deep end, you know. So I took on this um, integrative, it's called Integrative NLP Training and Coaching uh, from a minister mentor of mine. And it's like science of mind on steroids. I mean, it's intense. Is anyone familiar with this stuff? Yeah, a few of you, good. All right, so um, totally like science of mind. And we spend most of our time in the conscious realm, spirit realm, first cause, affirmations, prayer, and so forth. But the unconscious mind is what stops us, the hidden beliefs that are in there. So what a beautiful opportunity for us to get curious about what those are, for me anyway. <laughs> so did you know that the conscious mind can only process about 134 bits per second through our senses? So what are our five senses? Sight, Sight smell, taste, feeling, hearing. Yeah, we got them all. <laughs> so we can only process 134 bits per second through our senses. Now, we are actually receiving 2 million bits per second. So where does the rest go? Right here. Unconscious. Everything goes into the unconscious, right? And we take 134 of those bits and integrate them. We hear what we want to hear, we see what we want to see, we believe what we want to believe. Isn't that fascinating? I mean, we're receiving all this information and a lot of it gets distorted, deleted, or generalized. And, you know, that's like the blanket. Everyone always X, you always this, I always that, whatever those are, right? So this is all happening so fast, right? Now, the conscious mind is the goal getter, okay? So consciously, um, for instance, we're setting our intention, we're speaking our affirmations, but, I'm sorry, the conscious mind is the goal setter. We speak our affirmations, we're naming it and claiming it, right? We're, we're praying and we're speaking what we want to see and experience in the world, but then our un unconscious mind is actually the goal getter. So the conscious mind is the goal setter, the unconscious mind is the goal getter. So if you're setting intentions for yourself and your life and, and then um, not moving toward that experience, it's because there's some hidden belief in your unconscious that's stopping you. Whoa! <laughs> yes? All right, so... So it's time to get curious about those things and to know that it's actually not scary because we can look at the unconscious and we know that we are spiritual beings having a human experience. We know that we have the divine art on our side. We know that we are loved beyond measure. And by looking at it, by looking in these uh, places of 
for seeming darkness, we're shining the light of truth upon it, right? We're shining the light. It's spirit looking. Yes, I find great comfort in that. So, And the beautiful thing is that we can actually erase the programming that's stopping us from being all that we came here to be. Vibrant health, financial prosperity, boundless joy, whatever it is that you really want for yourself and your life is available to you. And this is how we do it. This is how we do it. <laughs> that song just popped into my mind. Wow. Thank you, God. Okay. Okay. It's cute. <laughs> I love God. <laughs> I do. So we're going to put this to the test right now. So imagine in your kitchen, where is the dish soap? Left side, right side, do you see it? That's from your unconscious, right? Dish towels. Where do you keep your dish towels? Fourth drawer on the bottom right next to the dishwasher, right? Did you think of where you keep them? Powerful. Now, what about a phone number from your childhood? Yes. That's crazy. It's crazy. She said, that's crazy. What about an address that you lived at like 30 years ago? Where does that come from that's coming from your unconscious? And so if we can remember those things, right, all of the other stuff that we've picked up along the way, specifically 15, 20 years ago, which is, that's a lot of it, right? That is what is having us move through the world. And so we're going to be curious and get curious about what those are and allow ourselves to transcend, allow ourselves to feel them and, and recognize them so that they don't run our lives anymore. Are you with me? Yeah. Are you ready for this? Yeah. yeah, right? So I have a question for you, and that is, what are you curious about? What are you curious about? So curiosity is a superpower because it enables us to learn and grow continuously. It helps us to expand our knowledge, skills, and abilities to become more adaptable and resilient in the face of change. It also promotes creativity and innovation by encouraging us to think outside the box and generate new ideas. Curiosity also helps us to better build relationships with others. Uh, when curious about others, we are actually more likely to listen actively, to ask questions, and to empathize with them, leading to deeper and more meaningful connections, which can be personally and professionally beneficial. Now, I love this, and I tend to ask a lot of questions, and sometimes it's too many questions. <laughs> right? No. No. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> you heard that. That's on, that's recorded. <laughs> I love to ask questions. And, you know, I think I've shared before, when I was a kid, I asked a ton of questions, and my dad would say, are you writing a book or something? And then I said, yeah. And he said, well, leave that chapter out. And I said, but it's chapter one. <laughs> That wasn't my initial response, but, you know, over time I learned a good response to that. I got to be quick. So I love what Dale Carnegie said. He was a famous author. He said, you can make more friends in two months by becoming interested in other people than you can in two years by trying to get other people interested in you. Yeah. Wow. We can actually deepen our relationships, those connections with our loved ones who are so important to us, and our connection with the divine by becoming interested. Having curiosity with people builds stronger relationships. So one of our challenges for this week, and I'm going to share it at the end too, is for every conversation that we engage in, think of questions to ask, not things to say. Good one. Because when someone's talking, you got something to say to that, right? <laughs> the response is forming, but instead we're going to ask questions to find out more about it. We're going to be like the reporter on the scene. <laughs> so, friends, curiosity can help us find meaning and purpose in our lives by exploring different interests, passions, and hobbies. 
we can discover what motivates us, what really excites us, and it leads us to a greater <laughs> sense of fulfillment and satisfaction. So curiosity about spiritual matters is so beautiful because it leads us to a deeper understanding and connection to the God of our understanding. We can explore different spiritual practices and gain a greater understanding of the meaning and purpose of life, which also provides us with a sense of direction and fulfillment. Being curious about spirituality also leads to our understanding and empathy for others and the world. So this fosters within us a sense of compassion and a greater sense and awareness of interconnectedness. Who doesn't want that? We want that, right? That's oneness. So I love what Ralph Waldo Emerson said, what lies behind us and what lies before us are tiny matters compared to what lies within us. What lies within us is spirit, the divine. And just imagine that this thing, this presence of love that is so powerful that is within us wants us to shine our light like it's our greatest cheerleader. It wants us to be all that we came here to be. But there's another unconscious entity that's got this banner that's saying no or whatever that banner is saying because our unconscious does have a banner. There's a whole different world going on down there. It's a trip. It is a trip. But it's okay, right? It's all right. Because <laughs> we get to look at it and go, wow, oh, that's actually not true. This is actually true, and here's the proof. I'm actually a child of God. I matter. I'm important. Not like a self-inflated ego, you know, self-importance. I'm important. But like, <laughs> yeah, not like that. <laughs> but like, I matter. I, I, there's value. Who I am is a valuable being. I'm a beneficial presence on the planet. And will I let myself be that in every interaction? Yes. yes. And that's a constant practice, saying yes to that. So a synonym for curiosity is interest. Again, what are you interested in today? What are you interested in? What else sparks your interest? What's calling to you, you know? What is interesting what do you want to know more about? Albert Einstein said, I have no special talents. I am only passionately curious. Wow. Let's be passionately curious together. And I love what Ernest Holmes, uh, what his experience of curiosity was. My understanding is that as a teenager, he was widely known as the eternal question mark. He was curious about everything and asked innumerable questions. And he would be alone on the countryside and ask himself questions like, what is God? Who am I? Why am I here? And he would wait and he would get those profound and deep spiritual answers. So there's a reason that we have two ears and one mouth. <laughs> By listening more than we speak, curiosity is activated. When you're having a conversation, don't think about what you want to say. Think about what you want to ask to find out more. All right, so I'm going to address the elephant in the room or the cat in the room, as it were. Curiosity killed the cat. Someone might be thinking that. Is there a cat? No, there's a dog. Hi, doggy. A curious little boy, yeah. So curiosity killed the cat is an expression that is used to discourage overstepping boundaries. This is different than us putting on our cape and being curious as a superpower, right? It's different, so we've made that distinction. 
Now, we live in a limitless universe, and we limit our experience of it by our beliefs and perceptions. So fear prevents us from following our curiosity into the unknown and feeds the hidden belief that the world is a scary place or that fill-in-the-blank is scary. And it makes us think we are walking our path alone, but we can never be alone. So we lean into our faith and remember that the divine is supporting and supplying us in all that we do. Amen. Yes. Glory. We are free to seek out the beauty that lies beneath the surface when we remember this. And we can. And we shall. <laughs> so, uh, so to wrap it up, you know, curiosity is genuinely a superpower that can help us achieve tremendous success and well-being in all aspects of our lives. Being curious about spiritual matters allows us to gain a deeper understanding of ourselves and the world and to find greater meaning and purpose and to cultivate compassion and empathy. So, are you ready for this? I hereby dub thee Captain Curious. <laughs> Everyone here, now I'm going to invite you to stand. Zoomers, you stand also, and we're going to assume the superhero power pose by putting our feet shoulder width apart. I'll get on this side, actually. Okay, oh, feet shoulder width apart, you with me? Yeah. All right, and then your hands on your hips. Yeah. Hold your head up high with your chin out, and finally hold out your chest a little bit, not too much. Yeah. Feel that super ha superhero pose, yeah. and take in some deep breaths. Ah. <sighs> ah. <sighs> Readjust your pose if you've fallen out of it. One more breath. <sighs> Say, I am Captain Curious. I am Captain Curious. All right, then have to take a seat. This is you. This is you for the whole month. But specifically for this week, experience that curiosity as your superpower. It is you. Let's be superheroes in our own lives and raise the vibe in the world. This week, practice being curious rather than judgmental. Observe how curiosity opens your mind and expands your heart rather than constricting your mind and building a wall of separation from others. Curiosity is light and sparkly. It's uplifting and joyful, and there is no fee or book needed. Just be curious. So the call to action for us is to move through the world this week with curiosity, to be willing to look below the surface, to revel in new discoveries and the beauty that these new discoveries bring, to have the courage to lay aside the fear, and to get excited by the unknown. Get excited by it. So specifically... Be curious about everything. Try something new this week. When was the last time you tried something new? Maybe you try eating a new food. <gasps> Maybe you try exercising in a different way. Maybe you wear something different. If you never wear hats, try wearing a hat this week. Or if you never wear boots, try wearing boots or a necklace or a tie. Right? Try something different and list three to five things that you want to learn. What are three to five things that you want to learn? And then in every conversation, think of questions to ask, not things to say. So it might sound like, tell me more about that. Or think of the five, what they call the five W's and one H. Who, what, when, why, where, and how. And use those. Pretend like you're doing a news report. You're on the scene and you need the info. 
Have fun with this, right? And then questions, contemplative questions for you to ask yourself are, what is holding me back? Am I comfortable where I am? And so I want to share um, what Pima Chodron says about curiosity. She says, we can learn to meet whatever arise, arises with curiosity and not make it such a big deal. Instead of struggling against the force of confusion, we could meet it and relax. Yeah. So I'm going to invite Travis up as I uh, wrap up with uh, one final story about curiosity, and it's just a sweet story. So there are two young women who went on vacation in Hawaii. Anybody been to Hawaii? Hawaii's awesome, and you got to go snorkeling when you're in Hawaii, right? It's like a thing. So these two decided to take this excursion to one of the most beautiful snorkeling spots. And when they got there, Jane, who had grown up around water, bounded off into the beautiful lava-formed lagoon. And then there was Anne, who was not a great swimmer, but she really wanted to experience the beauty that she had heard about. So she approached the water rather gingerly, and she got about knee-deep into the lagoon, and she was froze. She was, she was frozen. She was unable to go any further because of fear. And her friend came over and took her hand and slowly guided her into the water. And when they were waist-deep and settled on a spot of sand, um, uh, Jane took off her mask and let Anne look through it and had her take a deep breath and dip her head below the surface. And Anne was amazed. Wow. She came up from that so filled with joy and exclaimed that she would never see the ocean the same way again. Curiosity. Oh, beautiful. So let's take a deep breath together. And join me as we move into a contemplative state. You can do a little shuffle in your chair. Maybe you need to move your ankles one last time. Maybe you need to sit up or um, adjust your sleeves or whatever it is. Scratch your nose, cough, <clears throat> clear your throat, and get into prayer posture. And allow yourself to be still. And receptive. And the beautiful guitar music is like the connection to that deepest place within us. It's guiding us there gently, harmoniously. And we land deep within, in this space within us where we know who we are, that we know there's only one life, that life is God. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. Whatever you choose to call it, God, Spirit, Jesus, Buddha, Allah, the thing itself, the way, the force, the universe, creative energy, source energy, whatever it is you call it, that is the thing of which I speak, and it is here right now. It is in me, as me, and through me, just as it is in, as, and through each individual here, and everyone, everywhere. It's equally present everywhere. It's not like it's in other places more than it is within us right here and right now. And so knowing this truth relaxes me. It calms me because I know that there is a power and presence for good in the universe that is greater than I am 
and I have access to it because it's in me. I'm not separated. There's only one thing happening here, and it is the divine. And I know that the divine is this great and wonderful mystery. It's known and it's unknown. It's all of it. And so I know what I know about spirit. And this month, on this day, I begin to get more curious about the thing itself that exists within me and within all. Whatever that perceived shadow is, we are unafraid. We approach it with the divine light of truth and know that we are loved, that we are comforted and nurtured by this presence of love because it's already here within us. And so we are called to use our creativity and curiosity in our lives in every area, in the area of our spirituality, in the area of our relationships, in the area of our professional uh, wherever we find ourselves professionally in career, in the area of our finances, we get curious. And as we move through the world with curiosity, something happens within us. We begin to notice that our connections and relationships are deeper than they were before, that our understanding of the divine is deeper than it was before, that our understanding of ourselves is deeper than it was before, and it's a miracle because everything is working for my highest good, and we realize that. We have uncovered that. And we want to know more about that. The petty things before have no power over us. We are uninterested in the hoopla, in other words. We're uninterested in the dull and mundane matters. We are more interested in the divine than ever before. We are more interested in the light and the love and the glory of spirit in our lives and the way that it will work if we believe it. That's fascinating. I love that. Show me more of that, Spirit. I want to see this truth made manifest in my life, and I know it will be so. And I know that it will be so for myself and every individual here. So this is a great day to be alive. This is a great week to be alive. This is a great week of exploration. We try new things and we do things a little bit differently than we did before and know that we are connected and supported by the universe that has our back. Always in all ways. And I'm so grateful for this. Oh, yes, I feel the power the presence and the glory in my life. I feel this love, it's here right now. And I know that once this prayer is complete and we open our eyes, we look at each other and we see love and we see the divine. And it is good and very good. So thank you Spirit for all of this and so much more. Thank you for everything that conspired to have this day happen. This service on February 5th, 2023 on a Sunday morning at 10 a.m., the thing itself conspired to bring us all here. The thing itself conspired to play the music through the uh, band and musicians and the choir angels. The thing itself conspired to bring you here. The thing itself conspired to have this beautiful, gentle music played. All of it. This is God in action, and I see it, and I am in alignment with it, and it is good. I'm so grateful. Thank you, Spirit, for all of this and so much more. Thank you for all of the new things in my life, for the curiosity and the wonder and awe. This day is the best day ever. It's the only day we have. Thank you, Spirit. Thank you. Feel that gratitude wash over and through your body. Every single cell within us is lit up by this high frequency of thanksgiving. 
And with all of that gratitude and appreciation, we can release this prayer now knowing it is so and anchor it and believe that it is manifest because that's the way it works. And so it is. So it is. All right. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you.